Hi, I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting episode of Out of the Trenches, our Great War special episode where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and I answer your questions about the Great War. <laughs> Mr. The Flaming Cat, which I assume is supposed to be the Flaming Cat, writes, Was there ever a situation when one of the Nordic countries almost was pulled into the war? Well, the three Scandinavian kings met in Malmo, in the south of Sweden, in December 1914 to formally declare neutrality. Now, the Swedish king, Gustav V, was pro-German. Uh, much of his family was German, and many Swedish conservatives advocated joining the Central Powers early in the war. And actually, um, the king gave a speech in early 1915, which was written by the explorer Sven Hedin, who was a really famous explorer, that favored entering the war on Germany's side. And government policy at the time had a pretty strong pro-German bias. But the Swedish public had no desire to enter the war. And by 1916, they had a new cabinet who abandoned the pro-German leanings anyhow. Now, Norway and Denmark didn't seriously consider joining the war either. Denmark, specifically, since it was connected by land, knew that there was no way they could withstand a German land invasion, so it made really good sense to be neutral. But Germany didn't always respect that neutrality, though. Like, when the war broke out, Germany forced Denmark to lay mines in the Great Belt, which is those straits that sort of divide Denmark in two. And the British did not react militarily to this, even though it was an act of war, since the British understood the Danish position that you know, kind of had to do it, and the mines didn't have much effect anyhow. So, the short answer to your question is no. 17 Arc Rage, Arc Rage, Arc Rage asks, will you be covering the huge problems caused by the psychological aspects of the war, like shell shock? Shell shock. We will, yes, but not until later in the war, and it may. Well, it may sound gruesome, but we're waiting until there are millions more victims before we cover it. Uh, Asada Shrinon writes, Hey Indy, hey. Uh, what was Canada's role in World War I? We learned about it in school, but not much. Okay. Um, well, Canada, prior to World War I, didn't really have much of an army at all. Actually, in 1914, they had just over like 3,000 soldiers and a few old artillery pieces, and the nation, at that time, was totally unprepared for modern war. But the Germans didn't really expect any of the British dominions to be of much use in the war, though, since they figured the war would be over before they'd be in a position to help fight. They were wrong. The first Canadian troops that were sent over uh, were sent over in October 1914, and the Canadian Expeditionary Force initially totaled around 30,000 men. The Canadian Corps was organized as part of the British Army and eventually totaled four frontline divisions. Now, the men who made up this force were predominantly sons of British-born immigrants. Uh, recruiting among French-speaking Canadians was really difficult because many of them thought of the war as an English war, although there was one French-speaking Canadian battalion, the 22nd. So that's a beginning for you, so look it up. It's interesting. A big hairy woman writes, I wish this channel got more views. Any idea how they're funding this? I'm guessing the current view totals don't bring in that much ad money. Um, well, big hairy woman, we are funding it with the hope that it will become a huge success and pay for itself, of course. Now, since from the start we had exactly zero subscribers, that point has not yet arrived, even though we have like 70,000 and it's been like seven months, which isn't bad. But we are, though, beginning crowdfunding to make some side money that we can spend doing things like like shooting on location, like at Verdun or Gallipoli or whatever, which would be really cool. And you can check out that, that's our Patreon page, there's a link below for how you can go to our Patreon page. But, you definitely want to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, you can do that right here. And you definitely also want to subscribe to never miss a regular episode. See you Thursday.